On March 2nd, SpaceX plans to launch its first test of an unmanned Dragon vehicle, which is designed to carry humans into low Earth orbit and to the International Space Station. On the off chance that the test is successful, in the not-so-distant future, SpaceX plans to launch American astronauts from United States soil, interestingly, since 2011. While a significant milestone for a private company, SpaceX's most significant achievement has been lowering the launch costs that have restricted many space activities. While making several modifications to the fuel and engines, SpaceX's significant breakthroughs have come through recovering and reusing as a large part of the rocket and launch vehicle as possible. Somewhere in the range of 1970 and 2000, the cost to launch a kilogram to space remained fairly steady, with an average of $18,500 per kilogram. At the point when the space shuttle was in operation, it can launch a payload of 27,500 kilograms for $1.5 billion, or $54,500 per kilogram. For a SpaceX Falcon 9, the rocket used to access the ISS, the cost is just $2,720 per kilogram. Since the 1950s, the high cost of a space program has traditionally put it beyond the scope of most countries. Today, state and private actors alike have ready access to space. And while SpaceX is not by any means the only private company providing launch services, Orbital ATK, recently purchased by Northrop Grumman, the United Launch Alliance and Jeff Bezos Blue Origin are also players. It has risen as the most significant. Frustrated with NASA and influenced by science fiction writers, Elon Musk established SpaceX in 2002. However, it suffered several setbacks. In 2008, it launched the first privately funded liquid-fueled rocket, the Falcon 1. Falcon 9 flew interestingly the following year, and in 2012, the Dragon capsule turned into the first privately funded spacecraft to dock with the ISS. SpaceX has since focused on recovering key parts of the Falcon 9 to improve reusability and reduce costs. This includes the Falcon 9's first stage, which, once it expands its fuel, falls back through the atmosphere reaching speeds of 5,200 miles per hour prior to reigniting its engines to land on the drone recovery ship. In 2018 alone, SpaceX made 21 successful launches. The new Falcon Heavy rocket, an even more impressive version of the Falcon 9, launched in February. This rocket can lift 63,800 kilograms, equivalent to an excess of 27 Asian elephants, to low Earth orbit and 16,800 kilograms to Mars for just $90 million. The test payload was Musk's own red Tesla Roadster with a mannequin named Starman in the driver's seat. In addition to the crew Dragon tests this year, SpaceX is continuing development of its Starship, which will be designed to travel through the solar system and carry up to 100 passengers sometime in the 2020s. Musk has also suggested that the Starship could serve as the foundation for a lunar base. Impact on Space Exploration SpaceX's technical advances and cost reductions have changed the direction of U.S. space policy. In 2010, the Obama administration got away from NASA's Constellation program, which called for the development of a family of rockets that could arrive at low Earth orbit and be used for long-distance spaceflight. With NASA falling significantly behind schedule, because of technological difficulties and budget cuts, the Obama administration was left with the decision of whether to boost funds for NASA or change direction. In 2010, then-President Barack Obama toured Kennedy Space Center and even met with Elon Musk to get a first-hand look at SpaceX's facilities. The administration chose to reorient the program to focus solely on deep space. For missions closer to home, NASA would purchase services from companies like SpaceX to access to low-Earth orbit. Critics had a problem with budget cuts to NASA, as well as concerns regarding whether the private sector would have the option to follow through on providing launch services. While NASA has struggled to develop its space launch system, an analysis from NASA's Amos Research Center tracked down that the dramatically lower launch costs SpaceX made possible offered greatly expanded opportunities to exploit space for many users, including NASA. The report also suggested that NASA could increase its number of planned missions to low Earth orbit and the ISS precisely because of the lower price tag. In addition to substantially affecting human spaceflight, SpaceX has also launched payloads for countries including Kazakhstan, Bangladesh, Indonesia, and most recently, Israel. On February 21, 2019, a Falcon 9 launch pad, a privately fabricated Israeli lunar lander, which, if successful, will be the first privately assembled lunar probe. Overall, SpaceX has significantly reduced the barriers to space, making it more accessible and democratizing who participates in space-based commerce and exploration. Current Scenario of SpaceX SpaceX has boosted NASA science in other ways, delivering the climate-observing Jason-3 satellite and the planet-seeking Transiting Exoplanet Survey satellite to orbit. 
In 2022, it's set to launch the Psyche mission to a metallic asteroid in the first NASA launch of a Falcon Heavy, which sits between the Falcon 9 and Starship in its propulsive force. Get it's the company's upcoming Starship that has designers of science missions salivating. SpaceX has not announced a date for an inaugural flight. Get has fabricated six prototypes as a speed of nearly one per month. Three have been accidentally destroyed in testing. The steel alloy spacecraft and its super heavy booster stand 120 meters tall, towering over the Saturn V that carried people to the moon. Last year, Musk said full reusability and thrifty use of propellant would drop the cost of every Starship launch to $2 million. The rocket's 9-meter width cargo hold could easily accommodate giant celestial observatories, such as the proposed Habitable Exoplanet Observatory, which would directly picture distant planets. One reason for the endless delays afflicting the James Webb Space Telescope, the successor to the Hubble Space Telescope, has been the need to overlay up its segmented 6.5-meter miner to fit on board a European Ariane 5 rocket, says CFA astrophysicist Martin Elvis. Lately, the company has aroused the ire of astronomers with the launch of hundreds of Starlink satellites, which are intended to convey high-speed internet to remote areas. Starting from the earliest stage, satellites show up surprisingly splendid because of their low orbits, and they have left disrupted trails on the cameras of survey telescopes. I don't think they intended to screw up people's skies, says Megan Donahue, president of the American Astronomical Society. It was just because nobody asked that question of them. SpaceX is trying to moderate the issue. Some satellites in the following batch set to launch soon after the crew test will be blackened and equipped with visors that block sunlight. Donahue praises the company for working with researchers to address the problems. We as a whole are into science, she says. With that being said, let's move on to some significant updates on SpaceX. Significant Updates SpaceX will launch its cutting-edge Starship SN20 rocket one month from now after successfully testing its Deep Space Raptor vacuum engine, Elon Musk has confirmed. The launch will be the first orbital flight for the Marsbound, which is being worked to transport people and cargo around the solar system. Previous Starship prototypes have performed high-altitude flight tests from SpaceX's Starbase facility in Boca Chica, Texas. However, the following stage of development requires a massive super-heavy rocket in order to propel it to orbit. The November test will see Starship SN20 launch from Starbase prior to separating from the booster rocket and touching down an hour and a half later off the coast of Hawaii. SpaceX will endeavor to get the Super Heavy rocket using robot chopsticks appended to the launch tower named Mechazilla by Mr. Musk. That'll direct it back down onto the pad. In the event that all goes well, Starship will be ready for its first orbital launch endeavor one month from now, pending regulatory approval, Mr. Musk announced on Friday. Orbital flights require a launch license from the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, with the authority previously proving a hindrance to launches of previous Starship prototypes. The Raptor vacuum engines are a variation of the Raptor engines used in previous tests, featuring a much bigger nozzle compared to their SEAL-level counterparts. They will provide thrust for Starship's upper stage when there is insignificant atmospheric pressure. SpaceX shared a video on Sunday showing the latest progress of its Starship craft named Gateway to Mars. It included clips of the main Starship creature being appended to the Super Heavy Booster rocket, measuring 120 meters or 400 feet when connected together. The two rocket stages are capable of delivering roughly 100,000 kg to low Earth orbit, according to SpaceX's calculation, while producing 70 mega newtons of thrust off the pad, approximately two-fold that of the famous Saturn V rockets used to launch humans to the moon during NASA's Apollo missions. SpaceX signed a multi-billion dollar deal with NASA recently to assemble Starship rockets for the U.S. Space Agency's Artemis program, which aims to return humans to the moon in 2024. Eventually, the craft could carry up to 100 people on missions to Mars and beyond, with SpaceX planning to move toward 100 new Starship rockets every year. So that was all for today's video, guys. Do like this video. Also subscribe and share to our channel. Let us know your thoughts and opinions on SpaceX, and do you think SpaceX has a lot more potential and can develop much more in the comment section? Or in